The Republicans are at each other's throats after a small group of hardliners ousted former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. And now, just to add some more kindling to the fire, Donald Trump is reportedly considering flying to the Capitol next week, where he might even pitch himself as a candidate for a speaker. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Donald Trump, the far and away frontrunner for the Republican nomination for president in 2024, has spent most of the week in a Manhattan courthouse on trial for fraud. In fact, he claimed he couldn't leave, even though he was not required to be there. The corrupt attorney general sued me for fraud. And then they found out they had no case. And they have no case. And today, if you read the New York Law Journal, they basically say they have no case against Trump. But I'm here, stuck here, and I can't come pay. I'd rather be right now in Iowa. I'd rather be in New Hampshire or South Carolina or Ohio or a lot of other places, but I'm stuck here. He sounds like every single married couple during lockdown. I'd rather be in Iowa. <laughs> New Hampshire, South Carolina, or Ohio, right here. But I'm stuck here. So let me just sit here and drink this entire bottle of Merlot while I watch Tiger King for the third time. Again, not even true. He was not stuck there. He wasn't even required to be there. And yesterday, he left and flew back to Florida. He chose to show up so he could say ridiculous bull like when he claimed the judge in the case undervalued his Florida residence, Mar-a-Lago. He's been given this information. It's now been proven to be false, such as Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, being worth $18 million, when in fact it's much closer to $1.5 million. No one believes your chintzy Florida swamp hotel is worth more than the global box office for Barbie. <laughs> your Barbie nightmare house. <laughs> this place? The hotel that looks like the <laughs> castle you put in a goldfish bowl so he has something to look at while he eats? This thing looks like the first house you buy when you get drafted by the Miami Heat. Remember? <laughs> That photo from the federal indictment of all those boxes of classified documents in his bathroom, that doesn't look like a billion dollar property. That looks like something you'd see on Hoarders. Oh, God. Oh, it stinks in here. Well, the toilet doesn't flush, so I've been using the boxes. Don't open them up, it's classified. So the GOP. So the GOP's frontrunner for president is facing four indictments and a fraud trial, probably gonna get kicked off Zillow. And on top of that, they currently don't even have a Speaker of the House. They ousted Kevin McCarthy and then basically went on vacation. The interim Speaker, a guy named Patrick McHenry, a McCarthy ally, gaveled the House into recess. And as you can see, he was super pissed about it. The chair declares the House in recess, subject to the call of the chair. <laughs> you do not expect that energy from a bow tie guy. It's like a dad trying to get the last piece of Ikea furniture to fit. God damn it! The clerk won't fit into the course! So they adjourned the House, and the reason they did that, apparently, was the tensions were so high over the vote to oust McCarthy, they were genuinely afraid there would be physical fighting if they didn't get the hell out of there. Do you agree with uh, Congressman McHenry's decision, he's the, the temporary speaker, the speaker pro tem, to put a pause on the week to let tensions uh, settle? Uh, Jake, I'll be really candid. I think if we had stayed together uh, in the meeting last night, I, I think that you would have seen fists thrown, and I'm not being dramatic when I say that. There is a lot of raw emotions right now. I think it was best to let folks go back home, decompress a little bit, and then come back together. A week? Only a week? If someone at work did this in the middle of a meeting, I'd say, <laughs> I think we need to take five <laughs> months. I'll see you guys in March. Remember, this is the same GOP caucus that already had a near fist fight on the floor of the House the first time they had to pick a speaker back in January. You may recall that it took 15 votes last time to elect McCarthy with the same group of hardliners holding out and demanding concessions. And as it dragged on, things got so bad, members of Congress were lunging at each other, including one that had to be held back by his face. It's one thing <laughs> to be held back by your arms or shoulders, but your face. <laughs> that's not you hold back a congressman. That's how you grab a cat that's about to barf on a white rug. <laughs> I really doubt a week is enough time for everyone to chill out because they seem really mad. The same guy you just saw there, Garrett Graves, was on the House floor Tuesday yelling about the fact that his colleague, Matt Gates, who instigated the push to bring down McCarthy, was fundraising off the whole thing. I keep wondering, what is going on? Are we redefining what conservative is? What's going on in this country today? What's going on in this body? And all of a sudden, my phone keeps sending text messages. 
text messages saying, hey, give me money. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, look, give me money. I filed the motion to vacate using official actions, official actions to raise money. It's disgusting. It's what's disgusting about Washington. Even worse, during his speech, he got this text message. <laughs> and Graves isn't the only one upset, throwing a mini tantrum over the GOP mega tantrum. In fact, the GOP infighting has gotten so intense and so personal that Republicans are starting to make salacious allegations about each other on television. For example, here's a GOP senator named Mark Wayne Mullen talking about Matt Gaetz's alleged gross behavior on CNN. You gotta think about this guy. Um, this is a guy that didn't have, that the media didn't give a time of day to after he was accused of sleeping with an underage girl. And there's a reason why no one in the conference came and defended him, because we had all seen the videos he was showing on the House floor that all of us had walked away of the girls that he had slept with. He'd brag about how he would uh, crush ED medicine and, and, and chase it with, um, with an energy drink so he could go all night. Not only does Matt Gates definitely look like the spokesman for an ED medicine-infused energy drink, his <laughs> name even has a Z that you know is on the can. So he took ED meds and chased it with an energy drink. That sounds like something Rudy Giuliani would do by accident. Boss, <laughs> these Tic Tacs don't taste very minty. Uh-oh! <laughs> Everyone give me three inches of space. <laughs> but here's the especially infuriating thing. When this small band of GOP hardliners voted to oust McCarthy, McCarthy could have if he really wanted to keep his job, reached out to Democrats to try to win their support. You know, the same way he made concessions to the hardliners in his own caucus to get the job in the first place. He didn't do that. He dissed Democrats, he told them to F off, so Democrats voted against McCarthy for extremely obvious reasons, and yet Republicans have the gall to blame Democrats for not voting for McCarthy and bailing them out. I think today, was a political decision by the Democrats. Democrats just removed uh, the Republican speaker. Democrats basically turned on Republicans and ousted Kevin McCarthy. Every one of the Democrats voted against uh, McCarthy. You had eight, eight uh, Republicans that came together yesterday with 208 Democrats. Uh, so effectively, this was a Democrat eviction of Speaker McCarthy. Are you out of your minds? Democrats are in the minority. You constantly on them. Most of you claim they stole the election, but now you want them to bail you out while you accuse each other down in Viagra like Pez and threaten to beat the out of each other? Here's a thought exercise. Let's imagine a world where the shoe was on the other foot and eight Democrats were threatening to oust Nancy Pelosi. You think Republicans would come galloping in to vote for her and keep her as speaker for the good of the country? In order to think that, you'd have to be high on ED meds and Red Bull and ready to bang harder than this guy. <laughs> and... As if the GOP conference couldn't become any more of a cluster some Republicans are floating the possibility of making Trump the speaker, since technically it doesn't have to be a member of Congress. And when he was asked about it this week, he just didn't dismiss it out of hand. A lot of people have been calling me about speaker. All I can say is we'll do whatever's best for the country and for the Republican would, Party. Would you take the job? Would you take the job? We have some great, great people. Would you take the job? A lot of people have asked me about it, but we're leading my life 50 points for president. You know, my focus is totally on that. If I can help them during the process, I would do it. Yes, tensions are high and Republicans are near fisticuffs, so naturally the person to help calm things down is Donald Trump. That's like trying to soothe a wild stallion with... ED medicine. The Republican Party... It's such a mess. They're asking for help from a guy who's in court for fraud because no one else is willing to help them out. The GOP is like a guy who's so desperate for a ride to the airport, he calls a friend who's under house arrest. Yeah, sure, I can give you a ride, but when my ankle bracelet goes off, you gotta run! <laughs> and now it's being reported that Trump is planning to fly to D.C. next week for the speaker election to help figure things out, which I am sure will go smoothly. Now to some breaking news. We just got this. Donald Trump may be about to wade right into the middle of the fight over the next Speaker of the House. Let me tell you a little bit about what we know. This is being considered by Trump. He has not been back to the Capitol since before January 6th, but he's thinking about coming. Apparently, maybe, he thinks that he can somehow help unify the party at this time. Is it really a smart idea to go back to the Capitol after what Trump did on January 6th? I mean, I'm no legal expert, but he'd been indicted. I'm not sure you're supposed to go back to the scene of the crime. He's like a guy who gets busted on to catch a predator, then goes to the same house a second time. Whoa, Chris Hansen again? <laughs> what are the odds, man? What do you have in the bag? Same thing as last time, 
Mike's hard to lemonade and Twizzlers. <laughs> but apparently Trump might not just be going back to help. He might be going to take the job himself. Political reported today that Trump is open to pitching himself as a speaker candidate, according to a Republican familiar with internal discussions. You know what? Good. Let Trump have a job that sucks where half the people in the room hate his guts and he can't do shit. He'll be miserable by day two. It's all boring procedure and filing legislation and saying mind-numbing like the gentleman from South Carolina is recognized. He would hate it so much, he'll actually want to go to prison. Screw it, I'm pleading guilty. I gotta get the hell out of here. <laughs> I hate C-SPAN. <laughs> the GOP frontrunner for president is facing four indictments in a fraud trial. They don't have a speaker, and they're threatening to physically fight each other. Now Trump is thinking of flying in to make things even more insane. The only way I'm gonna be able to keep up with all this news is if I... Crush ED medicine and, and, and chase it with, um, with an energy drink. This has been A Closer Look.